my name is Blake from H&B Travels. Thanks for joining us today. Today we're going to be talking about something a little bit different. We're going to be talking about 20 things you may not know, what you can do, what there is, or anything else related to cruising. Stay tuned. So number one is some of these airlines and crews, they partner together, uh, let's say Royal Caribbean, Carnival, Norwegian, whatever your cruise company of choice is, they will partner with a airline or airlines depending on where you're coming from. And they will offer a all-inclusive package that covers your flights, your crews, your transfers. And we're going to get into that here in a little bit. But it encompasses everything. And the good thing about this is, let's say you're planning a cruise a couple months out or even a year out. And you don't want to pay it all up front. Sometimes these uh, cruise lines and airlines will allow you to defer your payment until closer to the cruise date. So instead of forking out a lump sum of cash for a cruise, you can actually defer those payments and pay later. So that's something to consider if uh, if you're looking to cruise here in the next uh, couple months, year, whatever, and that will give you a good option to save up those extra extra dollar bills. All right, and speaking of those airport transfers, I know with Royal Caribbean, let's say you book your airfare and your cruise together, sometimes things happen, especially in today's world, uh, airlines get delayed, they get uh, changed, they get anything like that. Sometimes uh, reading the fine print, and if you're, if you're not sure, ask your travel advisor or ask the airline itself, but they will actually wait for you. Uh, let's say you're flying into Miami from uh, Texas and your flight gets delayed and you're delayed several hours. Well, if you miss the ship, then the airline and the cruise line will communicate and they will actually fly you to the next destination. So let's say it's leaving out of Miami and it's going to uh, Nassau. That airline will arrange for you to get to Nassau to get on the ship. So something to consider, um, you know, the price, the price point is um, depending on who you book with and what time you're, of the year you're booking with, um, something to look at, check it out. All right, so number three is uh, the cruise terminal parking. Uh, this is when we first started cruising, this is something that we didn't really factor into the price. Um, cruise parking can be very expensive. Uh, let me refer to my notes here, uh, Royal Caribbean in Miami's uh, cruise port just to park at the port is $25 a day and that let's say you have a seven day cruise they're going to charge you for eight days because you're parking during the day and then you have like a half a day when you're getting off that adds up to $200 so another $200 added onto your cruise that could be used for uh, the drink package or an excursion or something like that so what we do is we always try to find a third party agency We've never had any issues. It's always been very, very nice to just be able to go to the secondary lot that's five miles, five minutes away. They load your luggage up, you get on an air conditioning bus, they take you and drop you right to the front door of the cruise ship terminal, and it's like half the price. Um, there's some websites out there that give military first responders discounts. There's um, deals where you can uh, prepay. There a bunch of different things. Look into it. All you have to do is just go to Google and type in uh, off premise parking for cruise lines. Uh, let's say uh, if you're going to Port Canaveral in Orlando, that's $17 a night to stay at the cruise port. So some people are kind of for it. Some people are against it. It is nice to be able to just walk on and walk off to get to your car, but we are okay spending an extra half hour or so um, putting that into our schedules to save that $200 um, and get it for you know almost half price. So look into that if you're thinking about parking at the cruise terminal. All right. All right, so number three and four are kind of combined. Um, I want to talk about the specialty dining and the drink packages and all this, the, the specialty packages that you can get on board or you can purchase pre-planned um, or you know pre-reservation before you get onto the ship. Most of the time when you get on the ship the first day, you're going to get bombarded with uh, crew members saying, hey, do you have a drink package? Hey, do you have a specialty dining? Hey, do you want to do an excursion? Stuff like this. So... When you get on board, if you don't have um, those packages already, talk to somebody and see if they have um, maybe a discounted rate. I know I've seen Royal Caribbeans, they do a buy one, get one drink package for you and your uh, traveling partner or specialty dining. They'll have a, um, a list of restaurants that you can, if you, if you spend this much, then you'll get um, a second night of specialty dining. It just kind of varies by cruise line, what type of, um, you know, what type of, of, uh, venue it is like if it's the steakhouse, a bocce, stuff like that. So when you get on board, we we always um, book ours prior just for less headache, and we can we already know exactly uh, when we get on board. We go to the reservation um, 
place there on board and say, hey, we want to do hibachi the first night. We want to do the steakhouse the third night. So that way, because they do fill up and just because you have a, uh, a specialty dining package doesn't mean um, that you'll get the reservation that you want. So if you've watched our videos, if you haven't watched our videos on these tips, as soon as you get on board, that should be the first thing you do. I know it's tempting to go get a drink or get a mimosa or whatever, but go to the restaurants, get your reservations, get the time slot that you wanted and go from there. Uh, as far as the drink packages go, um, they'll have a uh, like a drink of the day. They'll have a happy hour. They'll have uh, a two for one. So if, if you're not a big drinker and you just want to, um, you know, maybe taste taste a pina colada or get a tropical whatever at the pool bar looking they normally have them on the on the countertops the drink of the day or the bartender special and those are going to be a discounted uh, price for just a single drink or a two for one or whatever so if you're not looking to spend a bunch of money on the drink package that's also something that you can look for and just buy them uh, a la carte if you will kind of flowing back to the drink in the dining uh, packages check with the spa check with um, the haircutting uh, services on board a lot of those have a daily special sometimes they'll come in your planner if you if you want to get uh, a pedicure uh, today only you can go and get you know a pedicure for such you know fifty nine dollars or whatever or um, if you want to get a haircut you know if you get a haircut then you get a, a, a back rub or something for free or if you get a facial then you get a 30 minute you know back massage or, or whatever it, whatever it is so instead of just going to the spa and and booking right away take a look at your uh, if they have an app on board or or your daily planner that they put on your bed uh, look on there and see what kind of specials that they have i know we've done that before and we've kind of combined and saved a little bit of money um, any of these ships that have like the thermal suites or the hydrotherapy sometimes you can buy instead of buying a whole week long pass we'll split them up into two or three day um, packages to where you can go two or three days during the week instead of having to buy a full package so look into that um, you know do your research before you get on board and that that could save you a lot of money all right number seven is laundry i know you're on vacation and you, and you don't want to think about it but it happens we wear these shirts out in the out in the sun we sweat we get suntan lotion all over them we spill a drink we get the buffet pizza grease all over it it happens um, Laundry services are available on some ships. Most of the newer ships now um, have full-blown laundry service. I know some of the older ships that we've been on have, have actually had a uh, laundry mat style to where you can go do your own laundry. Um, look into it, especially if you're doing a, like a back-to-back -back cruise or maybe a week-long cruise. Um, so that way, if you, if you pack lighter and you want to wear the same tropical shirt twice or whatever you want to do, it's, it's, it's good to look into that. Um, I'm, I'm reading here there's a midweek specials there's a fill the bag for $29 they give you like just like in a hotel they'll give you a, a plastic bag if you fill it it's $29 for them to do so uh, especially you know bathing suits uh, undergarments socks anything like that, that you may need um, they also do um, if you bring like a nice uh, suit for men or ladies if you have a nice formal wear if you if you guys are planning on dressing up um, they offer the steaming service or the dry clean or whatever so they'll literally pick it right up from your stateroom and deliver it right back uh, we've never done the laundry service, but I do know a lot of people have, and uh, they've been pretty impressed by it. So next time you're on the cruise, if you need your stinky socks or piece of grease stained shirt, I'm not speaking of experience, but maybe I have been, uh, look into that and see see what you can see what you can do. All right, this next one is all about gambling. Number eight. Um, once you get on board, if you, if you're a cruiser, uh, you know that casinos are big on cruise ships. If this is your first time cruising, um, most, most cruise ships have a onboard casino. Um, those casinos are only open when they're out in international waters. So they're not going to be open 24 seven. If, uh, you're intimidated by gambling and you want to learn more, uh, most of the time that they will have some type of gambling class. I know on our last MSC cruise, um, they had a blackjack information session to where they'll give you um, some fake poker chips and they actually teach you how to play blackjack or I've seen poker or I've seen um, discounted uh, you know, slot tournaments or anything like that. Um, obviously, they want to teach you because they want your money. And, um, you know, this is a great way to learn. Sometimes I know we've seen uh, like midday um, blackjack is, is $5 a hand or a dollar a hand or whatever it may be. 
but this is a really, really good way to learn. And it's, it's, they're not pressuring you. You're with a group of people and it's, it is fun. It's uh it's a, it's a really cool way to kind of interact, especially if you're traveling solo or you want to meet new people. That's a pretty cool way to uh, interact and learn and do these things together. So check it out. All right, this is for all my motion sickness people out there. Um, sometimes if you check with the front desk, if you are feeling motion sick and you forgot medicine, uh, they will actually give you some motion sickness medicine. Um, you can Google all the wives tales. Like if you eat a green apple, that helps with motion sickness. Um, I know Hannah, she wears the patches uh, behind her ears. Uh, there are some that you have like a wristband, like a pressure point wristband. I don't have any issues with uh, motion sickness because I'm on a boat most of the most of the time. Um, but if for some reason you forget medicine or let's say uh, you've got a really bad headache or something like that, sometimes um, either the, the front desk or the concierge or whatever you may have on board, um, they have these medicines um, to give out to, to prevent that stuff. Or you can always go down to talk with the uh, onboard doctor and see if maybe if they have, uh, I've seen like vending machines that have like Advil, Tylenol, um, anything from, you know, feminine products, anything like that, they'll have uh, available. So if you need it, hopefully you never will. Hopefully you guys can pack accordingly. If you haven't seen our packing video, go check that out. Uh, I know we've gotten a lot of good feedback, a lot of stuff that we have on there. We take with us every single trip, whether it's a cruise, an all-inclusive resort, or even traveling, uh, to go see friends or family, we take these uh, take these items with us. So if you haven't go, if you haven't looked at it, go check it out. And uh, if there's anything on that list that we forgot or that you take, drop a comment and uh, let us know. All right, we're powering through. We're almost halfway there. Actually, we are halfway there already. Um, if you haven't done so already, drop that comment down below to uh, let us know what your favorite tip, what what you've experienced, the good, the bad, the ugly uh, about cruising, or even travel in general, what things do you take with you, or what tips have you learned or experienced yourself um, that you wanna share with us. Please do uh, hit the like button, that helps with our algorithm to, to reach out to more people. Um, and we, everybody that's watched this video or has been on our channel, we really, really appreciate it. We couldn't be here without you. With that being said, let's talk about excursions. Um, if you've seen our videos, uh, you've seen we've had some really great excursions. Sometimes, uh, one time we had a, a excursion in Belize where we went cave tubing and we were this close from getting left um, behind. The, sh the, the ship was ready to pull away. It wasn't our fault. It was a in Belize, well, long story. Just go watch the video if you haven't. It's, it's quite scary and comical at the same time. But the pros and cons, let's talk about pros and cons about excursions real quick. Um, the pro that everybody knows about is that if you book an excursion through the cruise line itself, not a third party, not off of Google or Facebook or anything like that, if you book through the cruise line, no matter what, the cruise will not leave you. So if we would have booked through the cruise line in Belize, uh, we hit a lot of traffic on the way back. If apparently in Belize City, that if there is a funeral, essentially the whole sh uh, the whole city, I was close, the whole city shuts down and all the roads are essentially blocked and it's just a massive gathering, which is awesome, but we didn't realize that's what was happening. So we were almost an hour late for our cruise ship. Luckily, and I hate to say it like this, but a lot of others were as well. So even like the cruise ship excursions were still stuck in traffic. So things happen. Um, if you book through the cruise line, they won't leave you no matter what, you're pretty much guaranteed to get on board. The cons of that is it is typically more expensive, um, but I'm a firm believer that you get what you pay for. So having that peace of mind, especially if you go to a place that you haven't been or a foreign country or, um, you know, cause if, if, if you're late, if you're not there, they don't, you know, go pack all your stuff up for you and leave it at the cruise, you know, at the, at the terminal there, they literally just leave. So you're stuck having to either fly to the next port or fly home, or it's just not something that you want to deal with. So but on the other hand, it is more expensive to book through the cruise lines uh, most of the time. But do your research. Um, you know, join if you have an upcoming cruise. Join the Facebook page. Normally, there's a Facebook uh, page for your cruise line and what date you're sailing, uh, and that way you can interact and see who's coming and where they're coming from and and all that good stuff. So something to look at. Do your research. Do your excursion research. And um, yeah, that's pretty much that. Uh, if you're from the United States and you're from the South or East in the United States, let me just give you a quick PSA. The 
iced tea on cruise ships is unsweet. I'll just say that. It's unsweet. So uh, if you have a certain type of sugar that you want to bring with you or anything like that, make sure you bring it because it is going to be just tea. That's all it is. That, that's it. Just tea. Um, another helpful hint is that most cruise lines, I know uh, Norwegian, we had it on. I don't know if MSC does this. But Norwegian cruise lines, um, they have in the hallway where the like the dorms and the, the rooms are, uh, they have special carpet to kind of tell you where you're at. So it could be, uh, I know our specific ship, it had fish that were swimming, like pictured on the carpet, and the fish were swimming forward, like to go with the ship. So if the fish were swimming forward, you know that you were going forward on the ship and not backwards. Uh, I know some cruise ships have different colored carpets on the port or starboard side, so the right or the left side. Um, so just, like I said, do your research. It's little things like that, that we've picked up on over the multiple cruises that we've done to help us, especially if you do have that drink package or it's late at night or whatever, you can find to where you're going quickly, easily, and safely. Uh, the next one is going to be a pre-cruise discount. So, uh, going back to the excursions, going back to the activities, the specialty dining or the drink packages, if you book them early, typically you'll save, um, it could be a lot of money. It could be just a couple uh, couple bucks here and there. But if you book it early, typically you'll save money. Um, I know uh, MSC Cruise Lines, if you book, I think, six to nine months out, you'll get a certain percentage off of um, the cruise fare as you would. Now, let's say uh, if you booked it 90 days out, you're not going to get that discount. If you book it six, eight, 12 months out, you're going to get a, a more of a discount uh, through their loyalty program. Um, also, loyalty programs, if you're not a loyalty uh, member with that cruise line that you're going on, sign up. It's free. You get points. If you like the cruise line, um, most cruise lines will match status. Uh, I know MSC, they match status. We were matched to Diamond. So the points add up just like a credit card. So no matter, even if you don't plan on cruising again with that cruise line, you'll still have points. Maybe those points will be able to, to be transferred to uh, give you a higher status on another cruise line. So look into that. Uh, we're going to hit these these three super quick. Um, if you're into themes, uh, such as a TV show, um, bands, um, anything like that, they have themed cruises. So this, I especially looked this one up for my wife. They have a Taylor Swift cruise coming in October of 24. Uh, fans can expect a welcome cocktail party, friendship bracelet swapping, a themed dance night party, karaoke, and Taylor Swift trivia. So if that's something... Uh, that you're super passionate about. I know that they had a friends themed cruise a few years back, I think on Norwegian or Royal Caribbean. Um, a certain band, certain type of music. I know they have like a reggae uh, music cruise. They've got uh, uh, Christ Christian uh, gospel stuff. They do, they do all sorts of cruises to cater for um, whoever may want to cruise in these groups and, and like-minded travelers. So look into that. If you're, if you're super passionate about something, that may be something that you should do. All right, the last three that I have are pretty much my favorite. Um, this is a cool little tip. Um, if you're not aware and you just want to go to the buffet for an evening uh, or you don't want to go to the sit-down restaurant or you're getting that late-night snack that you want to, you know, you would want to go get pizza or whatever you may have to soak up a little bit of that alcohol. If you don't want to eat at the buffet, you don't have to. You can take your plate, you can go to uh, somewhere, wherever. You can go take it back to your room. I know that's something that we do quite a bit. We'll go get some pizza, bring it back to the room after a late night. We'll lay in bed, watch TV, and eat pizza. That's our favorite thing to do. Or if you want to go to the buffet and the, the buffet is super, super crowded, go take it to the Lido deck or go take it somewhere where it's a little bit quieter, especially if you have kids or anything like that. Go take it to, or air conditioning. That's always a plus. Um, so take your plate. Go somewhere else and enjoy your food. You don't have to eat it in the buffet. Just be responsible. Don't leave your plates everywhere. You know, the crew is, is very hardworking and keeping the ship clean. So make sure you dispose of stuff properly and um, go from there. The next one is dress in your debarkation clothing. So meaning your very last day or your morning of when you're getting off the ship. This is something that it's kind of weird to talk about, but put your shoe the night before in the safe. I know it's weird, but that ensures before you leave that stateroom to, to leave your room to go home, unfortunately, you have to check the safe before you go home because your shoe's in it. So that way you don't forget your passports, your cash, your uh, 
laptops, anything that you may have in the safe. That way you don't forget it. So um, wear, your, wear your clothes that you're getting off. Leave a shoe in the safe. And that way you can prevent any hard troubles from happening. Weird, but nobody's going to judge you. Um, what's the next one? The cruise ship walls are metal. A lot of people don't uh, know this. If you look at our travel video, our, our packing tips, we talk about this a lot. We carry um, metal hooks that we can just simply just put right to the to the um, to the wall. It's really good for organization. It's good for hanging up um, towels. Or uh, Hannah has her her, her folding uh, stuff that she puts all of her her makeup in, her hair ties, everything. We can just put it right up on the wall so it's not taking up counter space. Because if you've been on a cruise. You know, storage is, is very limited on some rooms and some cruise ships. Um, branching off of that, check for secret compartments, uh, stuff that looks like maybe it's a cabinet or part of the bed frame or anything. Feel around and see if you can open it up because you'd be surprised how much storage you can get in a cruise ship if you look for it. Sometimes there's not, but sometimes there's plethora. So um, going back to that, get, uh, get hooks for the metal walls. Uh, last cruise that we did, it was Hannah's birthday, so we had them, um, uh, we, well, I didn't, but we had them um, put the hooks up and we strung balloons and streamers and happy birthday signs, stuff like that. So instead of using tape and being more environmentally friendly, you can get these hooks and use them for literally whatever you want to use. This next one's a little bit confusing. I know I still get confused by it sometimes, is your onboard credit. Um, specifically if you book through a travel agent or you book through the actual website, there's some times to where you can get onboard credit. So let's say uh, you spend a certain amount or if you book during a sale, they'll give you, let's say a hundred dollars worth of onboard credit. A lot of times people don't know they have onboard credit until they go to check out or see their final bill and they see onboard credit was a hundred dollars or whatever. And they're going, oh, okay, well, what can you use onboard credit for? Essentially you can use it for anything on the ship, uh, gift shops, um, drinks at the bar, if you want to go to a specialty dining restaurant. You got to check with the specific cruise lines. Uh, some don't allow you to uh, use your onboard credit for uh, alcohol purchases, uh, like at the, uh, the duty-free. Some uh, won't allow you to use it towards your uh, gratuities at the, end of the, at the end of the cruise. So just look at it. I know cruise lines are different. Most of them are trying to get on the same page, but um, make sure if you have a cruise booked, and you get on board and you can go to the kiosk or, or see on your app, make sure if you do have onboard credit, you use it. Because if you don't use it, you lose it and you won't be able to get it back. So make sure you're checking in on that. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. I sincerely appreciate you watching. Again, if you're not subscribed, we looked at our analytics. 98% of the people that watch our videos aren't subscribers. So just do us a solid and hit that subscribe button down below where you are planning for another cruise here in the next month or two. So stick around, we're gonna make that announcement. You guys should come join us. It's uh, leaving out of Orlando. I'm not, that's all I'm gonna tell you. Um, but come and join us, come have fun. We, we share as much as we can and um, travel as much as we can. Um, but you guys help us do that. So hit that comment button, leave us a comment down below where you're watching from, what tips you have, whatever you wanna do, let us connect together. Uh, hit that like button and make sure you are subscribed. Again, I'm Blake from HME Travels, and I appreciate you watching.